bring in David Wood. He's a senior analyst at the International Crisis Group. David, uh, Israel says that it doesn't want a wider regional conflict, but how high is the risk that this could spiral out of control now? So it's very hard to overstate the, the impact of the announcement that Hassan Nasrallah um, has been killed today. Uh, he was clearly the towering figure of Lebanese politics for the best part of, of three decades. And it's created uh, a power vacuum, not just inside Hezbollah, but also raises questions on the domestic scene. To answer your question specifically about Israel's plans, well, there are different options. One could be that not only has Israel successfully assassinated Hassan Nasrallah, but has also assassinated uh, many of Hezbollah's top military leadership. So, based on this, as well as airstrikes, which Israel claims have been increasingly taking out Hezbollah weapons and infrastructure, Israel might conclude that it has degraded the military threat posed by Hezbollah to Israel to enough of an extent and now push for a diplomatic or political settlement. Alternatively, what Israel might want to do is to continue to degrade Hezbollah personnel and infrastructure. The problem there, of course, is that it might not be possible to do all of that from the air, which would involve a ground invasion, uh, which could come from the perspective of Israel at a very great cost and might actually swing the pendulum back towards Hezbollah. So in light of those options, it would seem that the most sensible course ahead would be to immediately push for a political settlement and end the dire humanitarian situation in Lebanon. And how much damage has Hezbollah likely suffered in recent days? It's undeniable that Hezbollah has suffered lots of damage militarily, and not just in terms of the assassination of much of its senior military leadership, but also in the attacks on communications devices, which wounded many other members of Hezbollah. And of course, there's also the political impact uh, of this enormous uh, level of death, uh, wounding and displacement from civilian communities, which are aligned with Hezbollah. So for all of these reasons, in different ways, Hezbollah has suffered a great amount of damage. At the same time, uh, we cannot conclude that Hezbollah is finished as an entity. And indeed, it is clear that Hezbollah has not lost all military capacity. It has continued to fire rockets and missiles into northern Israel today. And it remains to be seen what Hezbollah's next move will be. Indeed, I mean, with Nasrallah gone, is it still is the militant group still capable of regrouping and putting its military uh, capabilities together fairly quickly? We need to remember that Hezbollah is an institution that prides itself on processes and having succession plans in place. So it will not take Hezbollah very long at all, for example, to appoint a replacement for Hassan Nasrallah. Equally. Uh, at all levels of the organization, there will be replacements in place who are capable of continuing with military operations. However, the question becomes, in terms of the capacity, particularly in relations to weapons and infrastructure, how much of that has actually been taken out by Israel's increasingly intense operations in Lebanon? It may simply be that for now, Hezbollah is not in a position to launch higher grade missiles, such as uh, precision guided missiles, which would create uh, much havoc and destruction in Israel. At this point, we simply don't know. Be before this latest airstrike, a barrage of airstrikes, uh, Hezbollah was a, a powerful force. It was, as a military, it was even bigger than uh, Lebanon's regular army, wasn't it? So that's definitely been the dynamic in the country for, for decades now, which is that Hezbollah has run effectively a parallel uh, military operation and one that it operates outside the state, but is more powerful than Lebanon's national army. But this raises a concern. Now that there's a perception that Hezbollah has grown weaker, there may be a temptation amongst domestic rivals of Hezbollah to seize upon this opportunity to try to dislodge Hezbollah or to acquire some of the power that has been left in a vacuum by these recent attacks on Hezbollah. This would be an incredibly dangerous situation because Hezbollah, while undoubtedly weakened in the past weeks and months, has not been bowed. And it is very unlikely that Hezbollah would take such aggressive action towards it lying down. Could, could a civil war then be on the horizon? I think it's a, at this stage not the most likely possibility, but it's one that cannot be discounted. And again, this is why caution should be, I mean, the first priority must be to 
end the uh, the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah through a negotiated settlement. Equally, members of the international community must encourage all sides domestically in Lebanon to ensure calm and that there's an orderly transition towards ending the conflict, electing a president and dealing with the economic crisis rather than making uh, dramatic power plays which could have horrific consequences for the country. Now, Iran's supreme leader has also called for a strong response to this. What is Iran likely uh, do, to do next? So what we know about Iran, and we've known from the outset of this conflict, is that Iran does not want to be drawn into a regional war. And for that reason, throughout the conflict, Iran has reportedly been advising Hezbollah to exercise restraint. Now. I don't think that those calls will necessarily have changed. On the other hand, Iran might be starting to perceive that Hezbollah, which has been suffering incremental losses for months now, is now starting to face an existential threat and therefore might feel that it does need to intervene directly, which again is another reason that now the violence must cease, a new security arrangement found at the Lebanese-Israeli border, uh, rather than escalating the conflict further. What's the significance of a senior re Revolutionary Guard official being killed alongside Nasrallah uh, on Friday? It's serious, but on the other hand, we know that Iran is a very cautious operator. And so, for example, uh, there were global headlines when the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, Qasem Soleimani, was assassinated in January 2020. Now, Iran still has not officially retaliated for that, despite uh, asserting that it will do at some point. So for that reason, I don't think that because this commander was also there that we should necessarily expect that event in itself to trigger a massive direct response from Iran directed against Israel. David Wood, senior analyst at the International Crisis Group, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you very much.